Hello everyone, my name is Jack from WePC and today I'm going to be going through my Outriders optimization guide. So before we actually start configuring some settings within Outriders, there's a few settings within Windows we can change to help not only Outriders run better, but any other game you want to run on your PC too. So let's jump onto the desktop and take a look at those settings. Okay, so here we are at the desktop. First thing we're going to look at is the Xbox Game Bar, so go ahead and hit your Windows key, type in Xbox Game Bar, and click on the second option down. Now we're going to make sure the Xbox Game Bar slider is set to off. Additionally, we can jump over into Captures, and make sure the background recording and recorded audio sliders are set to off. These settings have been known to cause FPS issues when enabled, not necessarily on computers of higher specs, and don't expect to gain 40-50 FPS from disabling these options, but every little helps. Another setting within Windows we can enable is Hardware Accelerated GPU Scheduling, so go and type GPU in your start bar and make sure this slider is set to on, this will require a PC restart. Now this won't necessarily give you FPS 100% of the time, but it can reduce latency and that can be a big factor in playing games. Next we're going to choose a power plan, so all you're going to want to do for that is hit the start button, type in power, and choose a power plan. This is especially important on laptops to make sure your computer is using power efficiently. We're going to go for the ultimate performance or maximum performance, whatever it is in your PC. You can go and change your advanced settings, but for this tutorial we're just going to stick to the normal default power plan. This makes sure your PC is using power efficiently and for the maximum performance it can. Okay, so second to last thing we're going to do within Windows, we're nearly done, I promise. We're going to head into our NVIDIA control panel. We're going to make sure we're on Manage 3D settings. And we're going to go down to Power Management mode. And we're going to change that to Prefer Maximum Performance. And we're going to make sure our OpenGL rendering GPU is set to our actual GPU. This ensures that the computer is not trying to use onboard graphics or an APU. And it uses our actual dedicated GPU. Now, finally, the last thing, we're going to head into Steam on the Outriders page. We're going to navigate to the Properties tab of Steam, and in the Launch options here, we're going to type DX12. This will help increase performance on newer GPUs, but if you've got an older GPU that isn't DirectX 12 capable, it's not going to be great. And a little window will pop up asking you which version of DirectX you want to use in the game, so that's handy if you want to switch out on the fly. Phew, alright, that's Windows done. We're now going to look at each setting within Outriders comparatively how the effect FPS and how reducing the quality of the effect affects visuals. I'm going to try and keep this as short and sweet and informative as possible, so let's get into it. So first off, you want to make sure window mode is set to full screen, and you want to make sure the resolution is set to your monitor's native resolution. It's well known within Windows that Windows allocates most of its resources to the on top window, and having Outriders in full screen makes sure that is the case. So the first setting we're going to look at is effect quality. Now effect quality does exactly what it says on the tin. It is the quality of the effects shown on screen. Effects will be things like skill effects, gun flashes, explosions, stuff of that nature. So let's take a quick screen grab of the FPS drops just after the effect has been cast for each preset. You'll notice that the FPS looks a little off. For whatever reason, my results from recording footage for the video didn't reflect what I actually achieved in testing. I'll put the true testing results on screen now for each preset. If you see me do this, that means the footage I recorded for the video, the FPS shown in there doesn't reflect what I actually got in testing and we will use what I put on screen as the mark to go off. Now with that little problem out of the way, we can see that low offers the best FPS with a dip down to 199, medium with down to 196, high down to 194, ultra down to 189. Now if we let the video play again so we can see the effects side by side, we can get a good look at the quality of the effect. So low is obviously the worst, it offers the flattest most bland effect, medium adds some flair to it and a little shock wave with some particles on the end of it. High had some dissipation and some realism to the effect, whereas Ultra looks pretty much the same as High. There's not a lot of discernible difference between maybe a little trail along at the end of the effect, but that's about it. So, with the FPS differences taken into account, and of course the quality of the effect itself, I would pick Medium. Medium is a good baseline for a lot of effects going on at once. If you've got a lot going on in one screen space, Medium is going to be an okay compromise to effect to FPS. 
If you've got the headroom, I'd go high, but if you have trouble at high, go down to medium, it should be okay. I didn't notice too much of a quality decrease overall. Combat is fast enough to where you're not going to stop to notice the effects. So next up on our list of settings is texture quality. Texture quality again does exactly what it says on the tin. It is the quality of textures in game. See, the thing is with Outriders is it looks pretty good even on low texture quality. I couldn't see that much of a difference, but it does in fact impact FPS. Now, even the differences between low and high are quite hard to see, especially in this screenshot, but I couldn't find a better example. Even when flicking through these images at a higher speed, you'll notice that low and ultra don't look that dissimilar. Lower tends to make the image look a little muddier, look a little bit darker, whereas ultra is a bit more crisp and sharp. It looks like it affects the whole screen space rather than just textures on screen, but I'm sure that's not the case. Now, I did run a quick benchmark on the footage I was using to make this video with, and it reflected exactly what I got in testing. There's not a huge amount of difference. There is an FPS difference. There's about 20 in between low and ultra. But I would say, put it on higher ultra. There's not a huge difference, it's pretty consistent throughout the game, the FPS loss. I would rather have a higher quality texture going on. Uh, the readings read ultra 219, high 220, medium 223, low 232. Now I would say put it on lower to push, but it's a setting that affects the whole of the game, it's textures, there's no division in Outriders of texture quality settings. So I would say put it on higher or ultra. I don't like how muddy it makes the screen space look on low. So just crank it up, turn it down if you have a problem. But for now, I'm going to say we're going to put it on high. Next up, we have shadow quality. Now, shadow quality is another funny one in Outriders as where it doesn't actually look like there's that much of a difference. But if you take a look at the FPS, there is a huge difference going on. Now taking a look at the shadow quality themselves, you can see that low offers a very smudged kind of blurry texture to the shadow, whereas ultra it's quite nice and crisp, but there are differences in the quality presets. Low casts fewer shadows, where ultra casts the maximum it can. Now for this, I would pick the medium quality preset because the quality of the shadow is better than in low, and with the amount of shadows cast being greater in low, you get an all-round better experience. Now, the amount of shadows cast isn't a massive difference. It's not night and day between the presets, but there is a few more in medium than in low. Now, if you have the headroom, I'd say go to high for that crisper shadow, but you are sacrificing a good 23 FPS there. But the lead from medium to ultra being nearly 80 FPS, that's more than what people run games at usually. So I'd say definitely go for medium for the higher quality shadow than low and more shadow cascades than in low. Now onto anti-aliasing or AA. AA in this game makes absolutely no difference and it's only a setting you're going to be using if you don't have access to DLSS. More on that later. So for AA without DLSS, just put it on Ultra. It makes no difference. 162 and 163 across the board. Now I'm at a position to say 1 FPS is a decent margin of error. It's practically the same across the board. So next up is post processing quality. All post processing quality does, yes, that is as hard to say as it sounds, is overlay effects on top of the image that's already been rendered, things like bloom. So we're going to go ahead and compare the two results we've got here between ultra and low. As you can see, as low starts to creep in, it makes the whole image overall more dark. It makes the foliage in the bottom left a bit less crisp, and it gives less of a nice feel atmosphere to the game. And as you'll see in a second, post-processing quality is an effect that affects FPS, but it also is something that comes down to preference. So you know the drill by now, let's whack them all together and see how they perform side by side. Unfortunately, like the case before, there is a bit of an FPS discrepancy here. Uh, I will put the results on screen now that reflected during testing. As you can see, there's a decent jump between low and ultra at 17 FPS. Ultra reading 199, high being 203. Medium being 209, low being 216. Now with this screenshot comparison, you can only really see slight differences in the overall makeup of the image. Um, it's not that noticeable. I would say that for gameplay, I put it on medium just for a better quality again than low. You're only losing seven FPS, but you're gaining a good 10 over ultra. Second to last is view distance quality or LOD. 
I'm very happy to report that as we slide through the presets, you can easily see the distant landscape get more fuller, more occupied, and definitely more detailed. Now, this is going to come at an FPS hit, of course, and as we get to the ultra quality preset and the background looks its fullest, we can definitely see a difference. Now, let's jump into the side by side comparisons and check out the hit in FPS. So, quite rightly, as you can see, Ultra's really suffering with a 138 average, High has 147, Medium has 155, Low has 163. But as you saw, the lowest quality preset is the least fullest of the environment, Ultra being the most lush and detailed. So yeah, I will put it somewhere around Medium, because as you can see in the comparison, there's a lot more vegetation and view distance going on there. It's a lot better than low, but it's not as good as high. I would stick it on medium as a nice middle ground because you get that 155 average, which is a nice 20 or so FPS boost over ultra. So I'm going to say put it on medium. Again, as of anything, if you have the headroom, put it on a higher preset. But for now, I'm sticking on medium. Now, last but not least is foliage quality. Foliage quality as a name is a little misleading because it doesn't necessarily govern the quality of the foliage itself. It seems to govern a foliage map, a sort of topology. Um, a higher preset has a denser map of foliage, whereas lower quality has less. It's less so of a quality of foliage, more so as an amount of foliage. And there is obviously some discernible differences here. So... Let's put them all together and see how this impacts FPS. So, as you can see in the side-by-side, -side, I know it's hard to see the amount of foliage with the images this close together, you can see that FPS is definitely impacted. On the top end, we've got low, which gives us a 263 FPS, medium 257, high 251, Ultra 249. Now, judging on the amount of foliage that we have, it's only really apparent in jungles and areas like that. I know most of the game does take place in a jungle, but outside of those areas, this will definitely become more of a redundant setting. So I'm going to say put it on again medium because just as standard, it's better than low and it's the second best FPS. Now, there's only seven difference between medium and high if you want to put it on high, but again, there's only nine between medium and ultra. So again, it's up to you. There's a lot more foliage going on in different areas. This is just one snippet, one section of the game that has foliage right now. Rendering a larger screen space with a lot more foliage will impact FPS differently, as with every single example in this video. So I'm going to say medium, but you can put it on high, medium, doesn't matter. Just for me, it's going on medium. Now, of course, onto the big guns, DLSS. Now, there's a few things to know about DLSS. I'm using an RTX 2080 Super to represent the availability of 30 series being very questionable at best. So we're going to be using DLSS 1.0. Results will vary between 1.0 and 2.0, but to keep this as fair and as representative of the current market as possible, I've gone with a 20 series that supports DLSS 1.0. This next set of results were tested on ultra everything with various DLSS presets. So we're going to be using DLSS off as a baseline and as you can see without DLSS enabled the game chugs along at around 83 FPS. So with that in mind we can see that quality offers the worst FPS with 96 balanced at 101 performance at 107, ultra performance at 115. Now it's important to note that with YouTube's compression, you're not going to be able to see a difference, but if you look at games like Cyberpunk, you can really see DLSS working. You know when it's at ultra, you know when it's at quality. Now I'm going to set it to quality. I'm going to recommend you set it to quality because it is still a nice 10%-ish increase, 10 FPS-ish. And you're going to see that it doesn't really reduce the visual quality of the game. So with all that said and done, all that's left is to summarize and then show the performance of our adjusted settings. So here we are in display in settings. We're going to set DLSS onto quality, of course. Um, we're going to head over to here. Make sure you apply those settings. We're going to head over to advanced now. We're going to put effects quality onto medium. We're going to head down to texture quality and put that on high. 
shadow quality onto medium, anti-aliasing doesn't matter, DLSS takes over, post-processing onto medium, view quality onto medium and foliage onto medium. So with this we should be good to go. As you can see, our game performs great with our optimised settings being 137 average, ultra being 89, medium being 128 and low being 153. Now, I've replaced high with our optimised settings because I feel that's a decent replacement. High would obviously perform worse than medium, so to be sort of high and at 137 FPS is really good. So I guess that's it. This was my very first optimization guide on the channel. I hope it was in depth enough. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed watching. Let me know how I did down in the comments. And yeah, like, subscribe. Head over to WePC for some great videos on PCs, tech, anything you could ever need. And subscribe to the channel here for more benchmarks, more optimization guides. So again, this has been Jack from WePC. And I thank you all very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.